would you like to see if this angle puts more force on this bolt than our dynamometer sees on our brake test machine? Let's find out if geometry is right on this episode of How Not to Do Geometry. Hi, I'm Ryan Jinx and welcome to my backyard. I am excited because we're finally able to use our Bolt Buster concrete that Bobby and I installed in the middle of my grass in order to do 300 brake tests for bolts and the convenience of my home. And sometimes we do have to test things in real rock, but most of the time this is perfectly fine. This is four and a half inches thick and the highest strength concrete I could buy. And I let it cure for 28 days, letting the sprinklers keep it wet. So this should be really good concrete. And if the bolts are snapping, this is perfect. If they're coming out of the concrete, uh, we'll go test it in granite or something. But our first test is going to be uh, a geometry question somebody brought up. They told me in our Crux Monster hang frame episode that we had, that we did, uh, when we were at GGBY, the dynamometer here that we have, because you don't want the dynamometer to fly, is not what the force we got on the bolt. Because when you do the hang frame angle, it changes it and you can get up to, I think, 141% at a 45 degree angle on your bolt. And they broke at kind of the same force that was breaking everywhere else. So I'm not thinking we're gonna be getting 80, 90 kilonewtons on those bolts. We actually don't know what force we got on them. So we're going to find out if geometry is right today. We have installed our bolt buster setup with a killer anchor because uh, we're going to brake test a line scale soon, which I'm stoked about. And I needed an anchor stronger than a four point BFK with a soft release in it attached to a line scale, because those break at 90 kilonewtons, line scales break at 90 kilonewtons, the soft release will probably break at 100 kilonewtons, I have no idea what a four point BFK is gonna break at. We're gonna simulate an entire highline anchor and pull the shit out of it. So we built a seven point anchor on this side and doubled up our amp seal and green span sets, it's freaking crazy. So over here, we have a line scale from linegrip.com and these go up to 30 kilonewtons. They're awesome dynos, and we have identical dynamometers in this case, which is super nice. We're going to be able to see how much force is here versus here, and we're going to keep changing the angle. So, well, let's get started. That's two kilonewtons. And we've got two kilonewtons. Imagine that. And weird. Two kilonewtons. It is uh, 0.07 more than that one. But, so what we have here is, since I'm not a math guy, if I was, I'd be an engineer and not paint houses for a living. Uh, that's 40 inches. Uh, this way, and 21 inches that way. It's probably what, 75 degrees, 60 degrees? I don't know, you can do the math, but uh, I'm sure very smart people will analyze this video thoroughly. We are on one bolt donated by, I believe, Clay from Arizona. Uh, we're going to brake test these bolts when we're done. Ooh, this jiggly. I got 3.22 here. And almost the same thing there. And something I contribute to maybe why it's doing that is because when you're on the high line, it's also going down. High lines are never level straight, and that's what throws off math usually. And so this angle is a low angle. This is actually um, some of the angles we have at GGBY, so it's not unrealistic, but we are going to eliminate these two now, and we're gonna find out what happens when we can get, let's say, a 45 degree angle in this? Because I do know how to calculate 45 degrees. How not to model. All right, so we have uh, 31 inches 
this way and 21 inches this way. Not quite 45 degrees, but we eliminated two soft shackles. So uh, this dyno here says 1.56 and this one's 1 1.8. So it's a little bit more, but I'm gonna show you a magic trick here. Um, this is not on peak force, but stay on that dyno and I'll be moving this back and forth. I'm moving the hang frame towards the hydraulic cylinder as if we were whipping and then back towards us, back towards the dyno, back towards us. And all I'm doing right now is moving the, the hang frame. So going back and forth does this on both dynos now. That's 1.7, 1.8, 1 1.7 right now. Going towards the hydraulic cylinder is 1.4 and two. 1.38 and two. So, but like there's, um, depending on how you set this up, has a lot to do with what kind of force this is gonna see. And that's the thing that I think the variable hang frames add into the scenario. But even in this situation, it's seen relatively the same amount, um, just chilling here. It's 1.2, 1.45. So peak force on both. So 3.14, what's that one say over there? Uh, 3.61. 3.61. So we are seeing a little bit more. That is interesting. Let me change the angle of this and do it again. Well, hopefully that doesn't collapse. <laughs> like as if I'm gonna hold this up if it falls. <laughs> so I'm still at 3.14, what's that say? 3.61. It's the same, okay, so yeah. let's just take the peak off. Oh, I just lost a ton of force right now. We'll just leave it live. All right, so 2.4, what's that? Uh, 3.2. Oh, wow. 2.4 and 3.2. And if I move it back, which is a nice way to do hang frames if it's not too far, because when I step on this, it pulls it forward. What's that read? Uh, 2.4. Yeah, and I got 2.4 right here. So that's even right now with the hang frame kind of leaning eh, a little too far. But, uh, Let's eliminate two more and see what kind of numbers we get. Woo, that goes up fast. Okay, so we now have 45 degrees. Let me show you. So I believe 20 inches here, 20 inches here. And I did pass the third grade, so that is 45 degrees. And uh, this, <laughs> I cannot lift at all to adjust it to show you how moving it affects it. Uh, unlike the other tests, I was able to lift it. So fun fact for you who like to do math. This is seeing 2.4 kilonewtons right now, 3.2. Uh, Brian Torse uh, broke down the math for me and showed that 45 degree angle is um, 1.4 times the amount of force here is you would have on the high line. Let's see, that's 3.2. What's that read? Uh, 4.2. 4.2. So it's one kilonewton more, so about 33, maybe 35% more. So it's basically right there. This does affect things a lot, but Brian was right. The test that we did in Moab, Utah, pulling Crux Monster bolts in a 45 degree angle, uh, those numbers were not the actual bolt brake strength. So. We fucked up, but that is the force you would have on your object, your high line. However, we don't generally get 50 kilonewtons on a high line. The results we had were 45, 45, and 51 kilonewtons on those tests. And basically that means they probably broke around 60, which isn't too unrealistic because we did in some sheer tests get 60. We even got up to 82 on some. However, we got 20 when we used this machine here uh, in pulling in tension, some of the welds broke at 20. And so we're kind of getting stuff like all over the place with those. We're not quite sure if he's dialed in more of the welding um, on his product, but um, it's all super strong enough. It's just, you know, 20 to 80 is a huge range. And kick fours, let's do some select lighting. Whew, that's scary because 
We're gonna be breaking this bolt in a minute. And it's, I think like a 40 year old rusty, what, closed shut? Is that, yeah, so, oh, at least we know they're at least five kilonewtons strong. 5.54 here, 3.44 here. So people who like to do math can break that percentage down for me because I can't do that in my head and we're filming it with my phone so I can't calculate it. So let's turn off peak force and see what kind of results we can get from me moving it. 1.3, 1.7 right now. If I did move this, because this does sometimes move when you're taking whippers on a high line. 2.4, 1.7. That puts more force on that side. And if I push it this way, the ring is not moving, which is super interesting how much this affects it. I can get 2.2 and 2.2. I can get these dynos to read the same if this is leaning back a little bit, but it's also me applying the force up here. So I'm adding so many variables to this right now that I have no idea how to like calculate it out in the field, but it's also irrelevant for our safety. It's just fun to play with geometry in real life. There's usually a lot of variables involved, including the angle of our high line, especially the big ones, pretty slopey. And um, I think this angle is like, like this, more than it is just a straight line and straight down at 45 degrees. 